You're listening to The Dental Guys, episode 81, Zirconia Bonding, Fact or Fiction, featuring Marcus Blotz. On today's show, we have one of our heroes of bonding, Marcus Blotz, to talk about zirconia bonding. Is it possible to bond zirconia to teeth for the long term? A few months ago, we talked about this at great length, and frankly, we were skeptical. Will someone be able to change our mind? Well, if it will be someone, it will be the author of that very paper we discussed, Marcus Blotz. He's here to see if he can sway us in a different direction on The Dental Guys. This episode of The Dental Guys is brought to you by The Dental Crafters Network, your implant restorative connection. From surgical planning to patient-specific guides, quality implants, and final restorations, The Dental Crafters Network provides one relationship with infinite possibilities. Call one 800 472-8302 today. That's 1-800-472-8302. Do you want to be able to understand, place, restore, and implement dental implants into your practice? Well, we've got the course for you. Restorative Driven Implants, taught by the Dental Guys. Restorative Driven Implants is coming to Nashville in 2019. Head over to RestorativeDrivenImplants.com now to sign up. That's RestorativeDrivenImplants.com. And welcome to this week's episode of The Dental Guys. I'm Wes, The Dental Guy. And I'm John, The Dental Guy. Wes, what's been going on in your world John, this week, man? This week, it's, um, well, you're listening to this right now, and it's the 18th of uh, December, and we're recording this uh, around... A little earlier than this, let's just say that. <laughs> right. We don't want to reveal just our. A little. We don't want to reveal how we record these episodes. Wait no, a minute. It's a secret, secret. well guarded secret. But as I hold this Starbucks blended latte. Oh, I now, noticed it has a Christmas cup. It is Christmas. You know, I'm wearing a Christmas uh, Woolridge. I got this Woolridge. It makes me look oh, like. Look a at you all. Now. I didn't realize you got the red <laughs> going, man. Only you can pull off red. It is a Christmas. I can't pull it off, yeah, dude. Red makes me look like I'm on Christmas, fire. Right? So, interestingly enough, my mom texted me today, and she was like, hey, uh, you know how we were talking about, like, growing up, we mom would hang these, um, like, pine-scented things that look like a pine tree in mm-hmm. the rearview mirror. It's like juniper smell, yeah. you know? Yeah, like the car fresheners yeah, things. Yeah, the car fresheners. Yeah. So, she yeah. texted me today. She said, would you believe it that... Starbucks has a juniper latte. So what? I'm like, what? A juniper latte? Like, drink your pine needle. You needle. That's right? so weird. So, as you guys know. So did you try it? Well, this is what I'm drinking right now, John. Oh, that sounds nasty, man. Let me just tell you, I took a, <laughs> I took a drink of it. And it's not their finest hour. I will say this. Ah. But here's here's the thing, you know. I, I'm, ah. I mean, I'll drink the whole thing. You know how I am. I mean, I'll drink it. Yeah, know? but mm. why? So, huh. so I come home, and You're and I was like, plant for my wife dinner had dinner on the table. I was like, you ain't, ain't gonna believe this. I said, Spar- Starbucks has a juniper flavored latte. Yeah. And she's like, Oh, I love juniper. I'm like, What? What? She was like. Let me see. Let me smell that. So I took the lid off the cup. She yeah. takes now. My wife does not drink coffee. Period. She doesn't no, like it. Not at all. She doesn't drink it. Yeah. I'm the only one in the yeah. house that drinks it. Yeah. And yeah. as much as I make quality coffee around here, of course, you know, quality, highest quality. So guess what she says? She says I like it. What? Like what? <laughs> so it's like the worst drink you've had from Starbucks. It's probably and it's the, the worst best drink, drink I've had she's ever had. <laughs> And it's and it's her favorite now. And it's her favorite. Oh man. Yeah, it tastes. Well, see, that's the same thing in my house, man. Because my wife waits all year for the chestnut praline latte. Oh yeah, all year. You know, most women it's like you're drinking pumpkin spice. You know. Yeah, I mean, exactly. It's like you're just basically adding maybe a half ounce of coffee to like a pound of butterscotch ice cream. You know, I just don't. And you heat it up until it turns into like this drink. And you drink it and you say it's coffee. I just, no, it's no, not. It's I'm really not. sorry, you know, but it's not. Every but time she, I she get loves something it, so. beyond my norm there, there at the old Bucks, I'm just not too happy Juniper, about it. Juniper, man. Juniper. So, <clears throat> so a couple weeks ago, I was out 
at Spear for a seminar, which, man, that's a whole other discussion we won't go into yeah, right we'll now. Is the airway prosthodontics is very good. Um, but while I was there, I ran into a friend of mine <clears throat> out at Spear. He's like, hey, man, there's something really special going on up in Bob Winner's uh, restorative design workshop. Mm. And of course, those of you listening to the show, you know that <clears throat> we just released some bonus content featuring uh, interview with Bob Winner, which is epic. It's amazing. talking about prepping teeth and sh choosing shades. And anyway, so for those of you who don't know, you know, there's not very many places you can go and actually do hands on like prep courses where somebody shows you how to prep teeth and then critiques your preps and you get better. That's what this course is all about. But he tells me, he's like, man, you're not going to believe this. It's just crazy what he's doing up there. And he wouldn't really tell me. He was all cryptic. So we walk in, like I walk in and the room is kind of dark, except just like the, the desk lights for these people. And up in the front, there are these massive 3D TVs. Like I'm talking probably like, I don't know, 70 inch, maybe 80 inch, three of them across the front. And so it's all blurry. And then I realize at this moment, Jeff Bonk, who's the other instructor there, he comes back and he sees me. He's like, hey, man. He's like, Bob's prepping in 3D today. <laughs> what? I was like, what? So here's his setup. He has a microscope that has 3D, a 3D camera going through the scope. What? And then the students are wearing 3D glasses while they're watching him prep so that they can see the depth of the prep. They can have perception of that while they're prepping at their station. So that he's got, so he's got a huge, like probably, I don't know, 120 inch 2D screen up there. You know, the typical one that they have in the workshop area. But then he's got these three massive 3D TVs going as he's prepping and he's working through the scope and it's in 3D. And did it's you put just glasses like this. on? Oh, you know I did, man. I was like, give me some glasses, bonk. Come on, man. Got some glasses on. And I like walked all around the room, you know, like looking at it from different perspectives, like Man. from the front row, the back row. It's amazing. I mean, because you, and I hate 3D. I hate. I know 3D we always movies. talk about that with video. Yeah, movies. they're dumb. It's terrible. Yeah, it's usually just an afterthought. You know, this, I don't like 3D movies. But this was like, I could, I could absolutely see this. And then what was funny? So Bonk was telling me he goes, you know in order to make this like kind of funny because it's like being at the movies for their little snack they got popcorn red vines <laughs> and coke like it was a movie screening you know so it was just like just kind of taking it up a notch and they don't even know if they're going to use that permanently right it's just that winter was just trying it out well, it, didn't to he see mention if it helped that in the episode um, uh prep well he color. mentioned he mentioned using He's transitioning over, and he kind of talked about this in the episode, to like this kind of heads-up display of heads doing up. dentistry, which to give credit where credit's due, Steve Buchanan's been doing this for a long time. You know, he's got a massive screen in his operatory, and he's, instead of looking down through the scope, he's looking actually at the screen right. and watching what's going on. Well, positionally, rather than work Bob says this is so much better. Yeah, so much better. And the way that these are, are working now is there's these... For you know, you need to go listen to the episode. Honestly, but, but it's the first time I've really considered like maybe in a few years I'll have something like this in my office. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and because it's essentially it's almost like navigation. You know, you're getting kind of this feel of navigation in the mouth on the prep real time, but you're sitting up instead of looking down and postures correct, and you have a much more magnified view of the tooth, and and because you don't have this massive microscope in your way that's why it's doable it's just this little tube as bob was saying that you can just easily position and you can work around it easily so it makes it possible for you to work using this big screen but that's anyway awesome. i mean it was just one of these things you walk in there and you're like man and interestingly who we're going to be talking to today oh, on the episode uh marcus blotz which we'll talk more about him in a second but he is one of the people that is actually looking at these heads-up display kind of things with Bob Winter. They're, they, in fact, brought it to his dental school where he works. So they're kind of doing some demos and talking about how they could maybe integrate this into student clinics at some point. That's awesome. So love to hear that kind of stuff. So, Wes, man, let's talk about yeah, what's so about you, to come up here. <clears throat> Interesting. We we had a, a episode where we talked about 
a article about the APC concept of bonding zirconia to uh, resins. Okay, can we bond um, <clears throat> to zirconia? And mm-hmm. uh, Marcus Blotz came up with the APC con- um, um, concept, and you can actually go back and listen to that episode. John and I have had mixed opinions on, you know, can you really bond to zirconia? And Marcus Blotz um, kind of pushed us a little bit. Yep, yep. By he the challenged of, us. It was good. By the end of this interview... You'll, Don't blow it, because we're going to do the outro. Yeah. Thing. Don't tell them our exact conclusion uh, yet. I mean, like... <laughs> I know you want to. Really, it's <laughs> interesting. So... I yeah. can't. I can't really say much because I think I'll spoil it. But yeah, don't spoil it. We had an opportunity to interview one of our favorite people. Um, yep. And uh, we hope he's listening. And uh, we found out that he likes uh, um, EDM <laughs> and was a, a DJ. <laughs> and he was a DJ. Yeah. And he was a DJ on the weekends. If, I think he still does it occasionally. Yeah, if you know me, you know I listen to a little EDM. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, I, yeah, yeah. We know. Yeah, we know. So. <laughs> Pump up um, music. Man, I tell you what, this is going to be a great interview. So after this message from, uh, from Justin Goodbread, enjoy this uh, interview with Marcus Blotz. This is Justin Goodbread, and here is today's tip. Now that your year is coming to an end, and you can see definitively what your total income and total expenses are likely to be, have a last-minute conversation with your certified public accountant and your certified financial planner to find out if there's anything advantageous you can accomplish in the last week of the year to help minimize your tax liabilities. That way, there are no surprises in April. For more information about today's topic and other dental-related topics, head over to financiallysimple.com forward slash dentist. Until next time, make it a great day. This tip is for informational purposes only. Please speak to a competent financial advisor regarding your specific needs. Justin Goodbread is an investment advisor representative of Heritage Investors, a registered investment advisor. Visit heritageinvestor.com or financiallysimple.com for additional information. Well, welcome back to The Dental Guys, and we're continuing our coverage from Spear Summit 2018 live from Scottsdale, Arizona. And you guys are in for a treat right now because if you've listened to the show, if you've listened to the show, you know that we have talked about this man before. This is Marcus Blotz, and he is here today. And yes, he asked before, he said, are you okay with the German accent? And I said, definitely, (laughs) definitely we are okay with the German accent because we're going to get really, we're going to dive down into a topic that is near and dear to our hearts. Wes, talk a little bit about how we got maybe to this point. So here I am one night, um, maybe a month or two ago, and Compendium on their Facebook page had posted, hey, Throwback Thursday. And it was throwback to a 2016 article on APC. And I read it again and I thought, man, John, we need to do a follow-up because we've talked about this before. Can you bond zirconium? Can you bond it? Because we t- people call us all the time. They talk to us all the time. So if, you, if you're listening to this, um, in episode 73 was the reason, we re- the reason we recorded episode 73, Crown and Bridge Cementation, was because my phone was upside down and I'm reading about Marcus Blatz and yeah, so Crown and I Bridge mean, we, Cementation. Yeah, and so just at that same time, we knew we were coming here. We didn't know we were going to be talking And we to didn't him. necessarily know that we'd be able to talk to you. <laughs> But we literally just talked for about an hour about your, your stuff the other day. So I want to dive right into that. So what is, let's introduce for those who don't know what the APC concept of bonding to zirconia is. Can you just kind of introduce what, the, what that stands for? What does it mean? Uh, by the way, a similar event at night, I was thinking about how can I make this concept you know, sound make it more easy for people to understand. A lot mm. of people know how to bond silica-based ceramics. You ask them, hey, hydrofluoric acid etching, silent coupling agent, everybody knows that. Mm-hmm. And it still startles me. I mean, I've been involved in this research for 15, 20 years, and still people have the same questions. And honestly, the interesting part, is it becomes more relevant now than it ever was before because more people use zirconia, they don't understand how to use it sometimes properly. That's how we got all into this. APC stands for air particle abrasion, primer and composite. I tried to simplify this concept. And that's why I came up with this acronym to kind of say, listen, just simplify it. 
And uh, so air abrasion, which is another term for sandblasting. Some people use sandblasting, but I don't like the term because we don't use sand. Mm -hmm. We use aluminum oxide. Right. And uh, also, it got a little bit of a bad, I mean, sand, you should never sandblast. Well, we use air particle abrasion. Mm -hmm. and, uh, Sounds better. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Definitely so. You use a primer on top of that and then use a composite. And that's pretty simple. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, but you have to use all these, these, all these aspects. Uh, if you only use air abrasion and then use a, a composite, it doesn't work. If you only use the primer, it doesn't work as well. We studied this 15, 20 years. We have almost 10,000 specimens. Many of them I did myself, actually, hmm. to look at this topic. Um, not even understanding how relevant it could possibly be, and now it's actually more relevant than it ever was before. Mm. Mm. So this, so this, uh, let's break this down then. Let's go through the A, the P, the mm -hmm. C, right. and really get into w how these things need to happen yes. in order to be predictable. So let's start with air, air abrasion, yeah. air particle abrasion. Mm -hmm. Is it about roughening the surface and creating mechanical retention, or is it just about decontaminating the surface? So there's a big difference when we when we talk about bonding to silica-based ceramics and to zirconia, because yes, silica-based ceramics, acid etching, what I'm doing is I'm removing the glassy matrix between the crystals. And with that, I create a very rough surface. You know, Air abrasion will not be able to do that. So the air abrasion may give you a slightly roughened surface. Actually, interestingly, though, in some instances, it even smoothens it. Mm. Um, so that roughening effect is not happening with air abrasion as much. That's why, of course, I know there's some studies and people said, well, if you air braid it, you weaken the material. That may happen if you have very large particles, high pressure. You look at some of those studies that show that, mm -hmm. they use high pressure, and one of them said, oh, we, we abrade it until you can see visual damage, and then the zirconia is weaker. Really? Of course. Right. Right. And you mentioned that in your article, that you say that the, there's a certain pressure that you do not want to exceed. Actually, and, and the pressure itself, the, the interesting part is, that the pressure itself and the particle size doesn't really matter as much. That's why you can keep small particles, hmm. 30 to 60 micron, one to two bar. Um, the pressure, you know, can be relatively low in just a short period of time, not for a minute, just five yeah, seconds. Yeah, you're just cleaning it out. Exactly. So it is decontamination of the surface. It's okay. You really want to get in the subject? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we want to hear. It. Got you. <laughs> yeah, let's okay. bring it. Okay. Yeah. Um, so what happens at the interface, and 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 we looked at this. Uh, I mentioned it in my presentation, you know, a, with a technique is called focused ion beam technology. Typically, when we look at bonding interfaces and uh, want to see how something bonds to something else, mm -hmm. we use a wheel, cut it, and then look under the microscope. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. That usually destroys it. With focused ion beam, we use a focused beam that can make three-dimensional cuts so we can really see the untouched okay. interface. Okay. Ah. We did that and looked at this, you know, and after only air abrasion, only primer, and, and the combination thereof. And what we could see, First of all, only the combination thereof will help, but also the sheer presence of aluminum particles on the interface already makes a difference. You may decontaminate it, typically, by the way, before any restorations that we put in the mouth will always go in the ultrasonic cleaner, alcohol acetone, right? Then I do my air abrasion. Mm. It may contaminate, decontaminate maybe a little more, but what's more important is the sheer presence of particles on that surface. Hmm. And some of them will get embedded in the surface. Sounds weird, but that's exactly what happens. Mm -hmm. So those particles are then available to get, to bond to. Because we can bond primer. to metal. Right? Or the aluminum. Or the aluminum. Exactly. Right. That's what happens. Right. Exactly. So is this, so how does this relate? Because this really was our next question that we were going to ask mm -hmm. anyway is, so tribal chemical silica bonding, cojet, um, it's the same idea in terms of how you would bond to silica-based ceramics, mm -hmm. but how does that material uh, interact with zirconia? Is, it, is there an advantage to using that as opposed to just aluminum oxide? Um, we tested it as well. We found it as, as good, so there was no significant difference between the two, but yes, you can do it as well. And uh, just to explain it you know, to the audience, um, we're talking about this, you know, uh, um, you know, tribal chemical silica coating is, these are particles that are aluminum particles and they are covered pretty much with this silica layer, basically. And this was developed uh, to bond composites to metals, actually. Mm -hmm. So it works extremely well. Gold, for example. Mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. Gold posts, you want to bond it in place, that's the way to do it. And because, especially in the metal, what happens through the surface, through the energy 
by air abrading it, those particles will get embedded in the surface. And now they're in the surface and you have a silica on top of that and then you can use a silent coupling agent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A silent coupling agent does not help you a whole lot on the zirconia itself. Right. It only helps if you have silica available. Hmm. So that's why I think that's something you want to discuss as well because again, the silent coupling agent only works on silica. Right, mm -hmm. but this idea of the aluminum oxide is truly particles are embedding and that is what is allowing you to bond. So there are some similarities in terms of what we're doing with say gold yes. and tribochemical yes. silica, but you can get the same advantages with aluminum oxide in terms of having something to bond to. It's not just a pure decontamination. It's not, it's truly giving you particles, embedding those particles. So John, yeah, and you okay. know, one thing that, that our lab had invested in years ago was Rokitech mm -hmm. from 3M. And, you know, so you get the, the lab has done some of this embedding of particles. It arrives mm -hmm. at your office. You mm -hmm. try it, try the crown in just like you normally would mm -hmm. verify fit and finish. And, uh, then you go through a decontamination process. So the lab quit using Rokitech. Why? I mean, do you do you think that that's because just aluminum oxide is good enough for our zirconia? Oh, yeah. That's why. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. They don't Absolutely. need yes. to. It's not yes. necessary. It's not to, necessary. And also, I wouldn't honestly. I wouldn't do in the lab. I personally like to do, do things chair side. Mm. You know, I want to. I want to do all the try-ins and and everything chair side. And then do the the process. And there was a question also. You know, how do we? You know, even by the manufacturer, you know, uh, you know, the particles have to come in a certain angle. It's very difficult inside a crown, so it's not that really clear. But also, you have to understand, you know, bonding is not just two two surfaces really sticking to each other. It's actually like a like a sponge, right? So you have some areas that are more right. attracted mm -hmm. to the mm -hmm. surface, and others are less. Like like a, like a bridge, like a plane, where you don't have a, a stiff. Right. So that's exactly how it works with bonding as well. And this is why those aluminum particles, you know, will help this spongy adherence mm. to the surface. It's not the same everywhere. And that's why even some particles that are just present, we then think maybe some van der Waals forces that are also mm -hmm. touching on the surface, okay? So it's a combination thereof. You know, so van der Waals forces. I, I'm so you know, glad that was mentioned on our show. Because, see, Thank you. That was amazing. Yeah, we have to take so the level up. Let's go to the next concept. Um, mm -hmm. We have air abrasion, and then we're going to follow up that with a ceramic primer. Tell us a little bit about primers and what they're, they're doing for us. So... Primers, I mean, have, of course, the main purpose to bond to the surface or to the particles that are on the surface as well. And then, on the other hand, bond to each other mm -hmm. or to the composite on the other side. That, that's, ex that's exactly what they do, basically. Um, now, you see some primers that have actually different components in them. That's why people, it's, it's always sometimes difficult to understand. And because some of the primers that we use for zirconia also contain a silent because people right. now do one bottle system. Universal exactly. types of things, yes. So they have both. Yes. The silent will help you much, as I explained before, to the zirconia. But other, other you know, uh, monomers or polymers will actually do. And one of the most popular monomers right now is actually the MDP, mm -hmm. which is uh, a, a monomer that has the ability to, to bond pretty well to zirconia and, and, and to alumina. And we've, we've studied that for many times, for many years, actually. You know, so... Um, yeah, that was kind of interesting, right? Because SE Bond, I think way back, uh, Curare de developed that monomer. Very true. And, and that was before we really even were thinking so much about zirconia. It was back in the days when it was just an interesting self-fetching bonding material. And then we kind of discovered that this this material, this monomer worked with zirconia. I mean, was, yes. was that something that you said you've been doing this for 15 to 20 years? Was that how that happened? Was that kind of by chance that, that MDP was, was experimented with? No, actually... It yeah, it's, it's, it's used for both teeth and also, you know, uh, uh, zirconia, of course, and other substances. No, the original Panavia formulation had MDP in it. Hmm. And it was actually developed to bond to gold. Gold, okay. because you can also use it for metal crowns, mm -hmm. you know, whatever. And, and that's where it came from, basically. Okay. Okay. And, and in the beginning, <laughs> the way it worked with our research in the beginning, there was a lot of research happening, like Matthias Kern, those people, you know, in Germany, uh, bonding to aluminum oxide at the time. And they found that Panavia works better than anything else. Uh, conventional cements, composites don't work. You need to have certain monomers in it, and that's what he looked at. What they did, though, they bonded to a flat surface. Typically, in our research, what we do, we polish the surfaces so they're all uniform. Mm -hmm. But when we looked at, and when I looked at some of the um, uh, crowns and inside, that's not a flat surface. 
And this one we actually moved over to using the primer because we understood that this highly filled composite wasn't able to by itself mm. a bond successively to a roughened surface. Mm. To flat, yes, but not too rough. And that's when we came with the primer. We found if you use the primer with the same monomer in it, in addition to that cement, we can wet the surface better and get better bond strength. Makes sense. Makes totally makes sense. Makes sense. Yes. You have to wet the surface. So the wetting means. agent. So MDP exactly. is the key monomer that, that all yes. these primers have in common. But... Does that mean that all primers are the same? I mean, are they all equal as far as their effectiveness with zirconia if they have MDP in them? Not every primer, by the way, has MDP. There's other, there's other uh, phosphate monomers, very similar ones that work also pretty well. Um, so there, there are some differences there. And also, of course, it depends on the purity and the, and, the, and the composition. Just because you have MDP in it doesn't mean it works as good as some other primers. You okay. Know? Uh, so there are some, there's some slight differences. Okay. So okay. you just have to do your research on the different yes. products and look at the studies that, that are exactly. out there and see what's working the best. Yeah, and you will find there's some gold standards, yes. Okay. 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 Well, that's good. So let's move then into uh, the, the final step, which is the C. Mm -hmm. the composite resin and let's talk a little bit about cement and we've got different uh, modalities for curing and right. I wonder what you would what you would say there as far as preferences or advantages and disadvantages of you know dual cure versus light cure versus self cure you know what are some advantages or some preferences that you might have for how people would 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 use those cements so a light cure cement I would use on a material that is very translucent um, your conventional, you know, laminate veneers or the feldspatic portion, that's okay. That's what we typically use, very thin. Mm -hmm. We use uh, the light cure. Uh, when you get to a thicker material, you have to think about that light is absorbed going through that material, going through the composite until it hits where you want it to hit, right? So um, when we have a more opaque material, like zirconia, for example, I would definitely go to at least a dual cure material. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Dual cure materials, some of them have the disadvantage, they discolor over time, mm -hmm. so you want to be careful with that. And uh, that's why I like to use also a, a, um, a self-cure material as well. There are not many self-cure composites on the market right now. Right, that's right. For example, the, the new Panavia V5 Opaque is, has actually a uh, self-cure material. So and you feel like color stability is still yes. a problem with dual cure? Uh, some of them. It depends on the function. Because the old tertiary amine thing was always the problem, right? right? Exactly. With Panavia, for instance. So they we, had that know, problem. A recent well, yeah, I mean, we, we read <laughs> right. these yeah. things, man. <laughs> yes. Excellent. But I was getting ready to say is that we read a recent research there that talked about tertiary amines and the most recent dual cure composites. Yeah, that they've solved some yes. of those problems. Solved some yes. of those problems. Exactly. And like That's five years, like Absolutely. they're not showing marginal yes. discoloration. Yes. Yes, okay. that's very true. So it's better now, but still, the yes. self-cure is, is, is less it's, common it's because less it's, common. it's not as sexy. Is that maybe why? Because people are so used to, we like light curing. Do you think that's why, or is it just companies we are like to be faster? Yeah, is it about Tack speed? Tack it and clean it? Is it mm -hmm. it's, it's more handling because, you know, mm -hmm. self-cure gives you a, a, a limited amount of time. You have no influence when it cures. It cures when, it's, when it wants no to. Matter, exactly. <laughs> right. No matter where your restoration is at a time. If it's the wrong spot, you're dead. So, right, right. It's a great point. Right. It's pretty simple. So uh, I think the thing that Wes and I, and, and about a year ago, we, we did a show on, on bonding and cementing, and we talked about our concern, and I really want to get in, dive into this, because yeah. we long-term bond stability, because with zirconia, uh, the concern that I think we, we all have about this bond, not, not that it's, uh, I, I want to hear what you have to say about this, because we know that we know that we know with silica-based uh, ceramics that it is a long-term stable bond. We understand how it works. And, yeah. and we talked a little bit before the show about this, and you said, you know, no, it, it, we are confident about this bond if it's done according to this protocol. Yes. Is it, tell, us, tell us why you're confident I mean, about that. I have, to, I have to preface that, though, with saying that the bond to silica-based ceramics is stronger than the bond to what we can get to zirconia. But with this concept, this is the best we can get. Um, okay, mm -hmm. just, okay, just just preface that. Okay. Uh, of course, there may be other you know uh, materials and, and procedures in the future. <coughs> but uh, right now, but this right now, this is what we have found. Like I said, in 15 years, this is what we just always come to the same conclusion. This mm -hmm. is what you need to do uh, to get it uh, successful. But there are a good number of clinical studies. We just published a, a review in the Journal of Dental Research uh, on the effect of bonding and the longevity of clinical restorations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and for example, what you can see with uh, resin bonded uh, fixed partial dentures, for example, there are some studies out there that are over 10 years, 12 years data now available. Mm. With, when you follow the protocol, zero debonding. Mm. 
97% success over 12 years with those bonded restorations. I mean, that's, that's, that's a good number. I mean, 97% at 10 years. Yeah. That's pretty convincing. That's convincing. Yeah. Because so, we've had concerns. I think that I think what, what really makes you worried is when you have um, a debond, well, uh, like you have, you have a full arch full zirconia arch, prosthetic, for instance, okay? And we're we bonding, cylinders. and we're often bonding its inserts, cylinders into this so that we're not milling zirconia to the platform. Yeah. And you have an insert debond, and it's a bad day, you know, because if you don't know that it's debonded, it can create a fracture uh, potentially. And so when that happens, it makes us say, okay, is this, is this bond predictable? Is it good enough? You know, and it sounds like you feel, yes, if we do everything correctly. Actually, I, I feel very strongly about that also because when you use titanium inserts, titanium is the best metal to bond to. Thick oxide layer is an ideal material to bond to. That's why if you have debondings and you're using this technique, you gotta think about also, go back and look at it and see why did it happen. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. It may not necessarily be the technique itself. It may be, it could be a whole host right, of things. Right. And it actually is a fail a misfit. point. Fit, misfit, yes. misfit, misfit, yes. exactly. That's what we sometimes, you know, when we do CAD CAM, we always think, oh, everything will fit. No, it's just as good as the information that you have in the first place. So right. if, you're, if your impression right. is right. not You still have to use on. a verification jig. Right. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thank, right. you. Yes. Thank you. Thank I you. Thank you. I think, you know, we, you know, we see a lot of movement away from maybe a solid zirconium abutment to a dental implant. A hybrid uh, abutment. Yeah, like a high. And now we're looking at tie bases, and we're bonding our zirconium to a tie base. And there was a lot of question about right. whether this is possible long term. Right, but Can't, you're but you're saying, hey, titanium is actually the best absolutely. substrate yes, when you do is. it correctly. Yes, it is. So we shouldn't be worried. We shouldn't be really worried about this concept so, as a long term solution for bonding. No, and and the studies that we did, and uh, I learned this, of course, from my teachers, is, is we always use certain, we, even in, our, in laboratory studies, right? Uh, we use certain protocols to, to stress the bond, right? I had one study, we, we put it in water for three years mm. and thermocycle it. So we're trying to stress the bonding interface to see what stands up over time. And yes, indeed, you will find very few concepts that will withstand the test of time. We always come to the same conclusion. Basically. John, why are we even having this conversation? Because, <laughs> you know, why are my crowns coming off? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, you and I <clears throat> lament when we hear that question. Right. Is it the bond or is it something else? And just before the show, we were talking about that with you. And and really, full coverage crowns are not what we're talking about here. What exactly. Are, what are the applications for right now in dentistry for zirconium bonding? We talked about one you know, with titanium cylinders and, mm -hmm. and, um, or titanium to zirconium. But what are the applications you're, you're utilizing uh, in dentistry? This is such an important point, and I was trying to make that make clear that you know, for a conventional crown made out of zirconia or coping, you know, you do not have to bond. So forget about all that. You don't have to do air abrasion and this mm. and that. Just forget about this. Makes sense. Use, use resin modified glass ionomer. Thank you. Use, yes. use yes. glass ionomer. Or use, I love those self-adhesive resin cements. Mm. They give you some bond, uh, not great, but some bond, and, and it, it's very simple to use. Like uh, 3M Unisim those or something like that. Exactly. Yes, yes. Or yeah. Panavia SA, whatever Panavia, you like. Yeah, you exactly. Right. Mm -hmm. But it, you can tack your M. It's, I love them. You can clean them up very easily. You don't have to worry too much about it. This is for your full coverage restorations mm -hmm. where you do not... It's a total different story when your restoration relies on resin bonding. That's mm -hmm. when I say, only bond when you have to. And that happens when... Your restoration does not rely on your preparation. Mm -hmm. It relies only on the bond. That is a resin bonded fixed partial denture, and that are your veneers. Right, mm -hmm. right. So this is, this is something that I think I really want to emphasize because we have had two different shows in the last couple of years on this topic but about it, people, I'm sure you've heard this discussion of, of zirconia crowns dislodging. There's been there has been this, this huge dis, dis discrepancy between what is really shown in the research, which is that doesn't happen when there's proper preparation design, and then there's this, this other side of things where people keep looking for a stronger and stronger bond because why do you think, we have our reasons why we think, why do you think that the zirconia crowns are coming off in some hands more than maybe, say, PFM was coming off in the same hands? I, I believe if you... 
if you do not bond properly, it's actually worse than the cementation. Wow. Mm. So mm. If, you, if you have contamination, for example, if you have a crown in the posterior, mm. right? If you have a crown in the posterior, okay? And you have saliva, you have blood, you have contamination. I don't even think about bonding. Mm. Because actually a, a good cementation may be better in that case. If you have contamination, the bond will not do anything for you. And may even hurt you. Absolutely. Because you, you have more things that can go wrong exactly. and, and more chance of, of things under that interface exactly. that you don't want. And we also feel, too, that some of this comes down to, uh, and we have to be careful saying this, not, not in a negative yeah, way. but I know where you're going. But there's, you know, uh, so there's labs that, you know, they go, oh, I want to get into zirconia. So the milling company comes in, they set up the mill. You know, we all know that you can set uh, your cement Expansion gap, your cement space, uh, however you desire. How can we quantify that? Right, and, and so we wonder if maybe there's some of this where it's just not calibrated, there's too much cement space, there's too much cement gap, and, you know, I don't know if that could be part of this too. I don't know. Oh, the, the laboratory process, that's why, I mean, you know I love zirconia as a material, as I love many materials, but it's not a very forgiving material, specifically in the production phase. Mm, mm, that is mm, that is really mm, something mm, that kind of worries me a little bit. If people say, oh, it's it's an easy material and it's, it's a metal. By the way, I made this very clear in my presentation. It's not a metal. It's not a metal. Right. It's a ceramic. It's the crystal of right. the metal. So totally different story, totally mm -hmm. different behavior. We have to be very careful with that, you know. Yes. So, and so I, the lab process, and I think that that leads us yes. maybe right into the next question as far as newer materials because, mm -hmm. you know, I think that... Uh, this, there's newer high translucency zirconias. Mm -hmm. And just before we started, we, we kind of mentioned this to you know, that, that there are reports, again, of, of possibly these materials being more brittle or more problems. And, and again, it, you mentioned that you felt that the laboratory production of, of those materials also is very specific. Oh, yes. No, that plays a huge role. We did tons of study on that subject because I'm, even though I may like the material, but there are some things we have to be very cautious with. And that comes into the milling process. It is also the sintering process. If your furnaces are not calibrated properly, you may not get the right, the right um, uh, temperature in there. You get a totally different material. Mm. If you change the temperature by just 100 degrees, the crystal growth during the sintering process is a very different one. And mm -hmm. it gives you material that does not have your 1,000 or 1,500 megapascal strength. It may have much less than that. And we saw that. That's why also the timing of, you know, we're a little bit worried about, you know, speed centering and yes. other mm -hmm. things mm -hmm. like that. So it all, you know, may weaken the material slightly. It may not have any clinical effect, but it weakens the material. You know, one thing that we learned it. from our dental lab technician is he, he highly invests in ovens. Mm -hmm. And and he showed us recently when we were up at the dental lab, we, yeah. we make frequent visits there because we want to understand that part of it because it's important. And it, it's one of the parts that we can't control sometimes, but that's why we choose a quality lab. As we were looking at his ovens, each oven is calibrated like daily. And they run, each oven now has programmed into it the specific manufacturer guidelines and then vetting those guidelines every day with calibration. And yeah. I think that that's sometimes, like you said, it's not a forgiving material. We're not talking PFMs. And, and it seems like that every, I've been, and I was fortunate to be a part of Zirconium when it came on in early 2000s and started using it early on as an early adopter. And I remember when marginal you know, ridge fractures were mm -hmm. a thing, and they're veneering like, oh, veneering issues, porcelain so. and all, and they were not learning how the heat, right, the cooling cycles, the cooling cycles so and all that, and, they, and everybody just wanted to blame yeah. the, the material. material. Yes, the material. Yes, and yes, they wanted yes. to blame it, and you know what it boiled down to is we didn't understand it. Exactly. We mm -hmm. didn't really know how mm -hmm. to use it. It's exactly. a totally different yes. laboratory process than gold so, and everything. So when, uh, well, go ahead, no, you, I know go you ahead. were going to say something. No, but th th this is such an important point. I mean, not just that we learn about the furnaces that have to be calibrated. Right. We also learned along the way, even if we use the full contour zirconia, that some of the stains that we were using or the colorants were actually affecting the yes. heating elements, mm. yes. destroying mm. them. But let's get back real quick. Yeah, outgassing, Brad was talking about. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but, but yeah. No, um, your point about veneering porcelain, my God, I mean, I remember some of my colleagues at some universities, they were going bananas over that. Yes, you know? it was a dark time. But, but you know, <laughs> we were... It 
<laughs> I have People. to say it, but we were stupid because mm. what we, in the beginning we used the same veneering porcelains that we used for PFS. Yes, that's, that's exactly I remember right. Metal, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Those alloys it's have not totally different to yes. of thermal yes. expansion exactly. than zirconia. When we understood that and we had uh, veneering porcelains that do extremely well in our laboratory studies, we didn't see. Yeah, problem went away, basically. Problem went away. We had one study with private practitioners in the Boston area. Over a thousand posterior veneered zirconia crowns with a veneering portion that we, it was Noritaka CCR, which has worked mm -hmm. pretty well, mm -hmm. um, and compared it to over a thousand PFMs in the same practices. I've seen this. No difference. No difference. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If, no it's, if you follow the rules, excess over follow the 7. rules. Seven point four years average. You know, I mean, you can't argue with that. Yeah, but it's it seems like we already had kind of moved past. Yes, people. I think people so. had said, you know, that was caused such a problem in people's minds that I think labs already started trying to move yeah. past it because they felt that there was such a it, it really it really caused people to to feel a negativity toward that restoration. Yes. Even though the truth is, is that when you follow the directions, yes. it's just as good as PFM. Which, but, but so, so let's boil this down to today with material choices. So if we know that we can bond predictably to zirconia, uh, we understand that we have high translucency zirconias available. Let's talk about when should we be using zirconia as a material when we have lithium disilicate that has very good strength. Uh, what, what do you see as some of the indications for zirconia and, and where bonding uh, where bonding is useful, we've already kind of covered that, but just from a material standpoint, should how much zirconia should we be, should we be using? See, um, I always say there's, I always am a big believer in the breadth of materials that we have available. Every material has its place. Mm. And just because we talk only about ceramics, for example, we still do a good number of gold inlays. There's nothing wrong with that. It's great material, you know? <coughs> Absolutely. Uh, onlays, for example, you know? So I think everyone has its place, and, and, and it's just a matter of what does the patient need? Mm. So this is how I make a decision. And then in, and it comes to you know what do you need is translucency, how much strength do you need? Mm -hmm. These are the, and, and it's not only translucency, everybody boils it down, it's also value. Mm -hmm. right. We talk much more about mm -hmm. value of the material. Yeah, it's the hardest thing. One of the advantages to do. Yeah. of zirconia is it has a high value. So if mm -hmm. you want to change underlying two structure, you know, quite a bit from a shade perspective, you want to use a high value material. And that's one thing that I think people like a lot. I also, like I said, look at the biologic aspects. We know we can talk yes. about that if you want yes. to. Yes, let's talk about that. Yeah, yeah. I Why really would want to hear about this yeah. because I feel like that everybody just wants to glaze zirconium. Mm -hmm. and we've, mm -hmm. A lot of know, labs are glazing labs it because it's know, quick. The University of Alabama, they published some studies back mm -hmm quite some time ago about wear characteristics of zirconium yes. and really the wear characteristics of zirconium polished zirconium is excellent Absolutely. but when the minute that you put glaze on zirconium yeah it's a and problem everybody does it's a lot a of people do and what yeah, but well, a lot of people a lot of, everybody no not everybody does. not everybody but i think but i think people do because it's fast but but the biologic i think we know about the wear characteristic mm -hmm. issue but, yeah. but biologically, yeah, biologically how does how does that change if you polish it versus glaze it how, what does that do to the biologic characteristics and this is a topic we really really are curious right now especially mm -hmm. in the implant world because mm -hmm. we want to make sure that we keep you know tissue stable as much as possible the nice thing about zirconia is actually a soft tissue like zirconia mm. Mm. Bacteria doesn't like zirconia so much. So we do a lot of biofilm studies right now, look at bacteria. And zirconia is a very favorable material, so, so bacteria and biofilm doesn't like zirconia as much as other materials. So that's, a, that's one of the advantages. Why also, I think we can all agree, when you put you know, zirconia restorations or abutments, soft tissue just looks... We got a dental nice hygienist standing behind, the, uh, behind over here, yeah. and she can attest to the fact that the margins around zirconium crowns are better than that of PFMs. Yeah. But that effect um, goes away when you put a glaze. I mean, first of all, you talk about wear. Mm -hmm. I totally agree. The best surface on, on your zirconia is actually the polished surface. Mm -hmm. That's why usually our occlusal surface, we use it in a polished way. And it's, you can, the nice thing about zirconia is a very small particle grain size material. So mm. we polish it very highly to it's amazing. shine. Mm -hmm. It's all amazing. It's unnatural. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah, we've seen under SEM, it's just, it's so yes. smooth. Yeah, it's beautiful. And but then, and they, I'm sorry, but the, the abutment, okay. Um, what we do there. On a, on basically the abutment for implants. Implants. Implant abutments. Yes, right. implant abutment. So that interface where the abutment goes to the soft tissue, this is something where I do not want to have any glaze. We saw very clearly, the second you put glaze on it, that interaction with the soft tissue is gone. Mm. Okay, so we uh, recommend to polish it. You don't have to polish it to a high shine. Uh, there's a certain roughness that the soft tissue likes, mm -hmm. and it's actually achieved with 
sometimes like a medium grit polisher. So if you have, you know, your coarse, medium, and mm -hmm. fine, mm -hmm. you usually do coarse and medium. And, and stop. That, that and stop. Stop that, yeah. Mm -hmm. and that's usually... That's good. That's well, I, and I want to ask one more zirconia question. It, sure. wasn't, it wasn't actually on the, on the sheet here. It just occurred to me, and it's just one we've, we've, we've talked about before. So uh, long term... There's been questions about full arch implant restorations with, with uh, hydrothermal aging. And I know this is something because you've done a lot of zirconia research that has been talked about. Do you think there are issues with that? Or do you think with the newer formulations and the way that alumina has been used and these, is, yes. that it's solved the problem? Yeah, some of the newer formulations do not have that degradation, actually. They, uh, um, low temperature degradation, they do not have that, the more cubic type of zirconia. But in general, it's also, we're talking about a very small area, thin surface in the surface area typically. It's not like going through the whole material itself. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, so if you have problems with fractures, again, you have to look at the lab, yes. see how they've reduced it. What we found also, I mean, as you mentioned before, how you cool the material. Mm -hmm. and, and our lab tech, Michael, is a master dental technician from Germany. He does all our work basically. And he, he told us from early on, you have to cool it much slower. Don't yes. open the furnace and let it cool down there. It may snap actually right there. Mm. You cool it down when the furnace is still closed and then you <coughs> open it and let it go. Yeah. Second thing is of course, when something happens, you always have to go back and think about what did I do? Mm. And a number of times I have to say, unfortunately, you know, it's also us as clinicians. If our impression technique is spot on, zirconia is not a forgiving material. It's a ceramic, it's brittle. Mm. It's not like a titanium that can bent and exactly. plastic deformation. It cannot do that. Mm -hmm. So when there is some misfit and you try to screw it in, mm. it's not necessarily no. the material itself. Yes. It's like if there is some yeah. misfit it, yeah. there, there's no forgiveness. Snap. Right. Yes. Exactly. There's no Don't forgiveness. forget the one screw test, right? John? That's right. Absolutely. You have to do the right. test. Right. Yeah. Sounds great. Well, John, man, it's, we, this is such good stuff. A P C. Yeah. Are you a believer? Honestly, I mean, I have to say, I'm a, I'm a believer. When I hear 97% success, I mean, up until this what moment... What are you going to change in your practice because of this? I think it makes me feel better about um, hybrid abutments. You know, I think that's the mm -hmm. place where I guess I had the most concern I agree. with tie bases. Um, you know, how, how much of a chimney uh, did we need to create with our tie bases? Mm -hmm. Did we need a true custom abutment? to get enough mechanical retention to overcome what I thought might have been a lack of bonding mm -hmm. stability. But it sounds like really that should not be a concern. And that's something that makes me feel a lot better about I think hybrid too, abutments. I, I want to go back in my practice and I want to make sure that I'm taking right before I submit my crown, after I've done my try-in, is take a roughened, uh, take a, a course first and then and polish the margins free of glaze or ask the, the lab to stop glazing at a certain level, maybe mm -hmm. one to two millimeters, super gingival. Yes. And, um, what, and do you, what is your thought on uh, materials like Ivoclean, which yeah. are sometimes discussed as far as a pre-treatment? Do you think it's, uh, <laughs> or should we, just, should we just not even talk about that? Because there's um, been discussion about so yes. things not to do. So and what should we do? Let's just say what should we do? I mean, do we is, pull the, it out? is the air particle abrasion, that's really all we need to worry about? So, of course, I mean, there's, everybody has a certain method. And, yes. Uh, you know, using different things. I personally like a clean service from the get-go. Okay. okay. That okay. means... I do all my try-ins, mm -hmm. and then I put the restoration, no matter what it is, every restoration before I cement it goes into the ultrasonic cleaner. So yeah. you put it, in a, put it in a Ziploc bag? Yes. Yeah. Alcohol, acetone. Alcohol, acetone. Yes. Alcohol, acetone. Okay. Any particular yes. formulation there? No. Or? No. 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 It's, no. Just, it's just no. a matter of getting it, yeah. getting it clean, yeah. decontaminated. Exactly. Two minutes. Right. Two minutes. minutes. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't cost anything. Take it to the lab, air particle abrasion. Yes. Then and go through the process. Go through the process. Ex exactly. And that, that's, that's why, I mean, what about, that's just... What about steam about. cleaning? Um, yeah, of course, you can, that's a possibility It's a well. good thing, but mm -hmm. it's not, again, necess necessary right. to, to this concept. No. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Man. Well, this, is, this has been awesome. I think that, you know, it, it helps us to understand this concept. It helps us to feel better about the predictability uh, of this concept. And I think that for a lot of our listeners that really in the end, you know, yes, we're, we're getting into some pretty geeky stuff here. We're getting into really the nitty gritty because we love that. But I think, you know, there's a lot of this that we can take directly to our practices. You know, we can say, That's how do you, how do you choose? Uh, when, when is this really important? Again, if it's a full coverage crown, no. we don't think about this as much. Exactly. No. Yeah. But we do need to be aware of how, if you, if you are relying on your bond, this is the way to do it. This is the way to do it. 
So it's been, thank you so much for this being with awesome. us and thank talking you. with thank us. Thank you. It's been yeah. a pleasure. <laughs> yeah, it's, thank you. It, it's, for, for us, this is a real honor. Uh, and uh, so, so uh, we we would love if we if you see it if you see another meeting, just be aware we'll be probably in the audience, right. listening great. to what you have to yep. say. And and it's been such a great time to have you there. And so, if you guys are listening to the show, and you've you've gotten something from it, if this is changing the way you look at cementation or bonding or zirconia. Uh, let us know about that. We want you to send your comments, your questions. Uh, you can post it directly uh, at, to our Facebook page. Uh, of course, thanks again to Spear for really uh, getting these this caliber of speaker here to Summit. This sure has been a fun event, Wes. It's been pretty awesome. It's been great. So for uh, Marcus, for Wes, I'm John. It's been a fun time together with you tonight. Wes, man, now that was pretty awesome. <laughs> I mean, you think about where we we had actually done a whole show. Yep or a whole segment of our show on Marcus Botts, basically. And little did we know that a few months later, we would have the opportunity to actually interview the guy live and talk about these concepts that he's really brought to us and, and has refined. And, and, you know, it's interesting because APC, as we heard, it's not really, quote unquote, revolutionary. It's not anything crazy. It's just basically that he's figured out that this is what's necessary in order to get a good bond to zirconia. And, you know, I don't know about you, but I really felt like I could be comfortable bonding zirconia at this point and feeling that now that he's showing me and opening my eyes to some of the more longer term research out there, maybe, maybe I was, maybe I was wrong about that. Maybe we were wrong about thinking that it wasn't good enough. Now, I think there's still some concern about bonding it to titanium. Because that's the thing, you know, we talked about kind of two things back in our APC show. We talked about bonding tooth, which I feel like he kind of put that to bed. Like, yeah. we can bond a tooth with good predictability, it looks like, even long term. But bonding to titanium, I'm still kind of worried about it, like with our hybrids, you know, and our cylinders and stuff like that. But it sure seems to me like you can do it. I mean, was that what you took away from it? Well... I'm just going back and looking at a little conversation that you and I had maybe over a, back in late October. And, I, um, and I'm going to post maybe on our Instagram and may have already posted. If you had, hey, listen, if you're not following us on Instagram, we're on there. Check us out, Dental Guys, um, at the Instagram there. And go over and check us out. If you're on Facebook, we post a lot of the same things there, too. We may post some th yep. things that are different on Instagram. But check us out, Dental Guys, not the Dental Guys, Dental Guys, um, on Instagram. And um, I had a tie base that came um, un... Um, yeah, debonded. Debonded from, from a zirconium crown, a zirconia crown. Right. And... Um, it turns out, really, the design was not great from the amount of titanium to mm -hmm. zirconia uh, <clears throat> that was made available. That brought up a conversation that, you know, John and I had kind of over text. It's interesting because there are only there's only one primer that we can use to bond zirconia to titanium that is FDA mm -hmm. cleared. Okay, and that's actually from from Ivaclar. Um, right. So our lab told us this because we're we're coming to you saying that because our lab said there's only one that's actually FDA cleared. Right. So that's as was far as disturbing. A cement goes. Right. You have right. to you Cements, have to yeah. use that to like if so if you have a tie base and you're bonding to make a screw, screw retain restoration. Right. And, and you using, and you actually are going to do it the way the FDA says you, you you're supposed to. Right. I mean, tell us if we're wrong out there, if you've got some other opinion on this, but from what we understand, uh, there's really only one that's FDA cleared. So, you know, the, the question is, can we bond zirconia to a tooth? And Marcus Blotz says we can. And we mm -hmm. can with enough strength that if it's needed. Now, he did right. bring up, the fact that if you're having problems with your crowns coming off, you know, that you've got a problem with your prep, pretty much. Is what yeah, that was good. That was good, I think, because he pretty much brought it back to what we've said, which is that, you know, he we shouldn't be relying. But I guess that was one thing I liked about some of the things he said is, you know, what's what's the point of bonding zirconia anyway to a tooth? 
you know? Mm-hmm. It's, it's just knowing that if you have a short prep, just the same as you would do with any material, you know, if it was a short prep, you're going to want to bond, but it's not really a strength thing. Like it is maybe for Emacs mm-hmm. and it's not a, you know, are, are does that mean you're going to start doing zirconia veneers? You know, I mean, I, I'm not, you know. No, but I think what he's saying is that if we have to bond to the tooth for whatever reason, we can yeah. use the APC concept, feel good that for what it is, it's going to provide us some bond, but it has to be followed to the T. In fact, um, his recommendation off camera for what mm. type of primer um, was really, he, he was really, uh, really into uh, the particular type of primer because of the purity. Um, right, how much MDP was in MDP. it and all that. Right, he really yeah. felt good about it. And uh, I don't know, John, you want to mention what, what we what we would recommend? Yeah, I mean, I think that based on the discussion with him and based upon some of the discussion we had, you know, before and after the show, I think he was really, he's a big fan of the Curare um, uh, product line. Yeah, clear fill ceramic, ceramic primer ceramic, plus. ceramic primer, clear fill ceramic primer, yeah. And he felt that that was uh, one that had some of the best, uh, that he, he felt like it had the most purity of MDP, the most MDP uh, per volume. Um, and, you know, there are other good ones out there. I don't think he was necessarily saying that you can't get a good result from, say, Monobond or all the other. I mean, there's a ton of them out there. Mm-hmm. But, <clears throat> but I think he was making the point that MDP and the amount of MDP matters uh, and that he felt that that was maybe the purest uh, that was out there. But, yeah, I mean, I think it was it challenged kind of my thought on this. I think it changed my mind about bonding zirconia to tooth that I feel like we can we can do it with longevity. Um, I wasn't so worried about whether we could do it at all. I was more worried about the longevity of the bond. Well, because what we've researched, we've seen, has not been really good. Yeah. And so what yeah, there's he, some he, studies was, that he question made us that. feel a little better about that. So yeah. follow the APC concept. Don't stray yep. in any way. He was really animate. Like, this yeah. has to be done this way. I mean, this is a guy that's probably tried every single recipe in the book to try yeah, to do you this. Know it. And so, hey, look. This has been um, a great interview, and we really appreciate um, uh, Spear Education allowing us to be able to to bring to lever- bring to you guys some high level people with high level concepts um, and like uh, Marcus Blotz, who has pioneered really many things. His his geekery is zirconia research, and we're yep. excited about. What they're doing at Spear Education too, John, with this 3D prepping and what Bob Winter. We're going to have Bob back on yeah, the show to talk about this. For sure. And so stay tuned for that. Um, yeah. John, absolutely. And I think that, you know, make sure, course. yeah, make sure that uh, if you if you enjoyed what we're talking about in this episode, if you have some comments or feedback, uh, make sure you, you give those to us. We want to know what you're using to bond Zirconi. We want to know if you've had problems with that long term. You know, does your experience fit? with what Marcus Blotz says works? Uh, or, or do you think that maybe he's wrong? Uh, you know, are you having more problems? Or are you having really good success and you're kind of pleasantly surprised that you, you, you turned out you were right, even though you didn't know that you were gonna be right? We wanna know that kind of stuff because it helps us to know uh, what, people's, uh, what people want more of uh, on the show. We've been getting some great feedback lately from some of our listeners asking questions about products especially and that's something that we all need to understand is, first of all, understand the concept. Second of all, understanding what products actually fit with that concept. So I want to hear more from you on that. Uh, definitely hit us up on social media. Check us out on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all the socials. We're on all of them. And uh, make sure you tell us uh, what you think about us with a good five-star review on Apple Podcasts. Make sure you uh, let us know how we're doing. And that's the best way for other people to find us, too, is when you leave us feedback uh, with positive reviews that are five-star. We really appreciate that. Uh, it's always good to uh, continue this journey with all of our listeners. Uh, we're glad for you guys we're, that, that uh, you're kind of here. And as we're kind of close, getting close to the end of the year of 2018, we, uh, we wish you guys a great Christmas and a great kind of finish to your year. Look forward to another awesome year with the Dental Guys. <laughs>